1960, an engineer was laying a water pipe in this sleepy corner of Sussex and found what looked like Roman remains. He called in the archaeologists and they excavated them a couple of months and a couple of years. They found more and more. It looked like a villa, then a particularly grand villa, then a collection of villas, until they realised that in fact it was a palace laid out on imperial lines. The largest Roman domestic building ever found north of the Alps. Today it's known as Fishbourne Palace and the footprint is comparable, maybe slightly even bigger, than Buckingham Palace. So this mosaic shows us a really important piece of evidence for the early history of the palace. These dips here are formed by post holes, wooden stakes dug into the ground. Now they were here because before the palace ever existed, probably just when the Roman armies were arriving in Britain around 43 AD for the invasion, this place became a, well, perhaps a, a beachhead where logistics were stored. So a granary was built here on wooden posts raised up above the ground, just a simple wooden building. When they came to build a palace, they laid these mosaics over it. They didn't bother taking the wooden posts out. And so, as you can see, the wooden has rotted and it's subsided down. So it's little clues like this that allowed archaeologists to tell the story of this palace, which is actually a giant mystery. No one knows for sure why it was built, who it was for, and even exactly what it looked like. This next group of mosaics is really important because these are the earliest mosaics ever found in Roman Britain. They tell us a lot about what the palace, this vast, enormous building, was used for. The, the, the work is very fine here. It's up to an imperial standard. So the suggestion is that these mosaics were laid down when the palace reached its peak, when it was finished in about 75 AD. Perhaps they tell us a bit more about what this palace was for. Was it a grand imperial residence, perhaps for a, a local chieftain who'd sided with the Romans during the invasion and was being lavishly rewarded by the emperor. Certainly in its layout, it's similar to a vast imperial palace, something found elsewhere across the empire. It was an important center of administration and royal rule. But also notice these mosaics are laid right on the ground. They're not built on a central heating system. So it could be this palace was designed as a reward for one individual, but without a view to the long term. Mysteries abound at Fishbourne Palace. This mosaic is, well, it's the most complete here. It's one of the most remarkable I've ever seen. You've got Cupid riding a dolphin in the middle and lots of symbols around the edge. It's suffered some subsidence in the middle it's amazing how well it's lasted all these years. It was actually not part of the original palace build. And experts say they can see the difference in craftsmanship with laying the mosaic. I can't really. But uh, apparently this was built towards the end of the second century. So around about 100 years after the palace was built. So although much of the palace seems to have fallen into a bit of disrepair after that initial burst of activity in 75 AD, there were still building works and improving works going on a hundred years later. So somebody was living here. I love just looking at all the different corners. It rewards lengthy study, this. I love just looking at all the different shapes and icons and all the different corners and spotting small differences. For example, there's a little bird in one of those circles over there, where's all the rest of flowers. It seems crazy in Britain to build a house without central heating, even here in sunny Sussex. But Fishbourne Palace had no central heating, which is part of the supporting idea that it was thrown up quite rapidly, designed to impress. That was put right though in the late third century, around 275 AD. They started laying this underfloor heating called the Hypercaust, where hot air would blow through here, fed by slaves in a big furnace, hot air would blow through here, heat the floor above. A few interesting things about this. By this stage, the palace, bits of it had been demolished, uh, that it was being used in different ways. So its heyday was past, but obviously someone still had an interest in it. And you can see evidence of that demolition of certain parts of the palace. These are, some of these orange tiles here with the groove in them 
are roof tiles from the, probably from the rest of the palace. They're now being recycled, built into this hypercourse system. And you can see there's a, a dog paw print there and uh, human fingerprints there d during the firing process. These, uh, they would have made their mark. This, this hypercourse, this central heating system, was never completed because in around about 280, a fire seems to have destroyed much of the palace and it was never properly reoccupied after that. We don't know what caused the fire. Was it an accident? Was it a mistake by the central heating engineers? Or was it one of the raids that we know were sweeping up and down the south coast of England in that period as seaborne raiders from across the North Sea started to attack the rich pickings of the Roman Empire? It's just another one of the mysteries that surrounds this incredible palace.